Working out the shear sense in faults is like putting together a puzzle. To shear is for two rocks to move against each other. To find out the shear sense is to try and work out in what direction each of those rocks moved relative to each other. Let's start building this puzzle by looking at the types of shear sense. In normal faults, the hanging wall moves down. The fault dips at approximately 60 degrees to the horizontal. Reverse faults are the exact opposite of normal faults in which the hanging wall rises relative to the football. Reverse faults thrust dip at approximately 30 degrees and they tend to occur in areas undergoing compression. In a strike slip fault, the fault surface is vertical. The direction of lateral movement can be defined by using the idea that an observer is situated on one side of the fault. If the observer views the opposite side of the fault moving to the left, it is defined as a sinistral fault. If the observer views the side of the fault moving to the right, it is defined as a dextral fault. Oblique is just a combination of strike slip and reverse or normal faults. Now let's look at the indicators. Displaced mark beds are the most obvious sense of shear indicators because you just need to observe where mark beds, such as sedimentary beds, veins or dikes, move relative to each other. However, we need to ensure that we're measuring the true displacement and not the apparent displacement. Because for accurate shear sense indication, the true displacement needs to be measured. Dilational jogs begin as a fault with a bend. The arrows in the diagram indicate the sense of shear. As the fault ruptures, either side moves apart due to shearing in the fault. This creates space known as an extensional crack where minerals or breccia can precipitate in. The gradual enlargement of the infill creates lines of minerals in the jog, which are represented by the folds in the yellow card. By knowing this, we are able to determine the sense of shear in rocks such as this one. Slickened sides are smooth, polished surfaces of two sides of the fault. They become polished due to frictional sliding. Identifying slickened sides does not actually tell us the sense of shear, but they do indicate that we are looking at a fault surface. An example of the slickened sides is seen here, where the fault surface is far more polished than the other surface. On these slickened sides, we can have slickened lines, which are groove lineations formed by rocks breaking off one side of the fault surface. As the fault displaces, the sides of the fault move past each other and the rocks plow into the opposite wall, creating lines seen here. These are useful for identifying the sense of shear because the lines are parallel to the direction of shear. So here we have an example of using slicken lines as an indicator of shear sense. Here we are pointing out lines formed by frictional sliding. These are slicken fibres, or steps as they are more commonly known. They are formed when mineral fibres grow during the displacement of the fold. The step shape itself is created as the hanging wall and foot wall slowly creep past each other, which causes the fibres to grow in little steps. It shows the sense of shear as when you move your hand along the fold plane surface, the steps will be smooth in the direction that the opposite side moved, which in this case is upwards as the foot wall moves up in a normal fold. So here we have an example of a rock which uses steps as an indicator of shear sense. The surface will feel smooth when you move your hand towards the direction of shear. Riddell shears are another type of shear sense indicator. They begin with the main fault having shear occurring on it. And then you get synthetic faults occurring as a result of the shear. The main types are R dash, which make a high angle with the main fault, and R, which makes a lower angle. These are Riddell shears, but you also get extensional fractures known as T shears occurring. Both Riddell and T shears dip in the direction of shearing, and thus we can tell the shear sense in the fault. T shears would be seen as features such as these where the blue arrow represents the sense of shear of the main fault, while we would observe Riddell shears to look somewhat like this. And that's our finished puzzle on working out shear sense and faults.